The end is nigh for the Land Rover Defender. Safety and emissions pressures are forcing an end to production, and while an all-new model is expected in 2018, it will be very different to today's car. The current Defender is the last direct descendant of the 1948 Series 1 Land Rover and will end a 67-year story that's produced more than 2 million vehicles. From the 1956 London to Singapore expedition to countless camel trophies, the go-anywhere grit of Land Rovers has been tried and tested in every corner of the earth. The journey through every kind of terrain that Europe, the Middle East and Asia could offer. We we're saying a fond farewell to the Defender on home shores by way of a special off-road challenge. But we're not going to find that here in the car park at Edinburgh Airport, so we're heading 300 miles northwest to the Outer Hebrides. Modern kits such as heated leather seats and a fancy stereo are all very well, but all we needed for our trip was that trademark Land Rover toughness. So instead of a factory fresh example, we chose a 20-year-old Defender 90 station wagon with a full 216,000 miles on the clock. The car had been kindly loaned to us by Scott Taylor, master technician at Pentland Land Rover in Edinburgh, who buys, sells and customises older Defenders in his spare time. The 90 is a little rough around the edges, and without a sixth gear, the diesel engine booms away, but the ride is manageable and the steering stable enough as we weave gently along Great Highland Glens, onto the Isle of Skye, and eventually through the jagged Quarang Rocks on our way to an overnight stop at Flodigarry. The next day, we take ferry across to the Outer Hebrides, the long chain of wild islands that runs parallel to the west coast of Scotland. While it felt outdated on the mainland's trunk routes, the Defender is at home on the meandering island roads, where life has a gentler pace. It's a stunning corner of the UK, with endless empty beaches to rival the world's best. But it's harsh too. Second World War airmen were tempted to RAF Ben Becula by the promise of a woman behind every tree. Only to get here and realise no trees. But its ruggedness makes it perfect Land Rover territory and the ideal place for our final Highland fling with a Defender. Now this might be the end of the road, but it doesn't mean it's the end of the journey for this car. Near the village of Solis on North Uist, we meet local farmer Angus MacDonald on a track that leads down to the shore. If we're going to make it right to the edge of Britain, and indeed the edge of Europe, we'll need to cross a sandy bay to the island of Valley, which is owned and farmed by Angus and is home to nothing but his Highland cattle. But on dry sand, that wouldn't be the toughest final challenge for our defender. So we wait. So it's the morning after, it's about 10am and conditions certainly are a bit more challenging. The weather's closed in and we also have about two miles of Atlantic Ocean between us and the island of Valley. For this trip, the Defender is pretty much as it left the factory with the important addition of a raised air intake. It's actually designed to keep dust out but is also fairly watertight. The engine standard, that's a 2.5 litre turbo diesel 4 pot TDI 300, producing just 111 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque, but low range and a differential lock will help us make best use of the available power. At the back of the engine bay, three breather pipes will let air out of the front differential gearbox and transfer box without letting water in, and there's another one further back for the rear diff. Our plan is to create a bow wave ahead of the grill, scooping out pockets of air down the side of the car to limit the amount of water around the engine and in the cabin. If we start to float, we'll need to open the doors to flood the cabin on purpose, allowing us to sink and regain traction. But we're hoping it won't come to that. While Angus says the sand is generally firm, there are patches of gloopy quicksand that could swallow our wheels. <laughs> go straight far out, just go the way you're going. You can turn in front of them there, that yeah, right? shouldn't get any deeper. Up to and over the half metre mark, it's fairly easy going. The steering weights up a bit, but the seabed is holding firm. We take in the strangeness of driving while totally surrounded by water on all sides. While the Defender's stated wading depth is half a metre, which is near the top of the wheel rims, the water is now up to 1.2 metres deep, taking it above bonnet level. Now the water is just up to the front of the bonnet there really, but we've got a nice little bow wave going, pushing the water ahead of us. Now low range is important here because every cubic metre of water weighs a tonne. So actually this car is really pushing a huge amount of weight in front of us, even though we're only doing about 7 miles per hour. Gusts of wind whip the wave crest into spray that our wipers can't quite keep up with, ramping up the forces the Defender has to push against, which is when things get really tricky. 
Then the depth increases and our bow wave becomes a proper roller, rising to bonnet level and spreading about 15 metres either side of us. I would not want to back in this one. Engine note drops, so it's quickly down to second gear to maintain momentum, and there's not a horsepower spared. It really is sink or swim at this stage. But the old landing chugs on, slowed, but undefeated. Soon the seabed rises beneath us as we climb onto Valle. The headlights are half filled with water, but amazingly, our feet are completely dry. We push on across the island's flowering macker, over a pebbly rock crawl and down onto a stunning deserted beach with glowing white sand and bright blue rolling waves. With nothing but Atlantic Ocean between us and Nova Scotia, we've reached the very edge of Britain. What a place to say goodbye, and what a car to have taken us here. Yes, it's old, leggy, noisy and uncomfortable, but it's been absolutely relentless, and even Angus is shocked by its performance. The Land Rover Defender, as we know it, will be sorely missed.